Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm your host, Adam Schaefer. This is the third video of a five-part series that we are doing with John Wolf from the Onnit Academy. This one right here, you guys, this is a great, why should you even use the mace bell? Why should you use steel mace clubs? How are they beneficial? We're gonna get into that in this video. Also talk, talk about the rotational and anti-rotational properties of these tools and then how to incorporate them with other exercises and why you should probably be doing them. If you guys like this video, make sure you guys like it, subscribe, share it with your friends. We're dropping information every single week for you. Okay, John, I'm a big fan of the mace bell. I see it now somewhat gaining popularity. Yeah. Uh, thanks to people like you and, and people over at Onnit. Um, and I wanted to express the need for this or actually the relevance of this within people training. Like I get a lot of questions about like, how do I use the mace bell in my fitness program or what's the benefits to them? Yeah, I think that we can go over a couple a couple really easy accessible ways for people to understand the power of this tool. Mm. And so then they'll start to internalize and be able to say, okay, oh, now I get how it actually impacts the body. So if you just have one, or even if you have say a short barbell and you put like a five pound plate on one side or a 10 pound plate, you right. can go through these drills and you'll instantly become very aware of what's happening when you're using a mace. So I think the thing about the mace uh, versus the club particularly is you have the ability to split your grip mm. much wider. Mm -hmm. You can emulate essentially a barbell in terms of movement skills. And so by taking an unfamiliar tool and introducing familiar movements and applications, you can become a lot more comfortable with the, with, with the tool. And mm. I think that's the, the, the best first step. Okay. So let's just go ahead and go like, oh, we call it an over, over grip. So uh, change your, you grab it and go ahead and orient it like you would a barbell. And, and so, exactly, so this over, over grip. Now, if we hold it in front of you, let's just take note, even in this, this static position, there's a lot of information going through Justin's structure, right. especially because he, he chose to grab it so far from the weight on the mace, right? Yeah. So, so you're distal from that load, which means that, hey, whether he's keeping this nice and straight, there's actually a ton of rotational control mm -hmm. that's demand that's being placed on you, particularly in the shoulders. Right. So what's happening is if if Justin moves this hand lightly off the, the, the mace, look, the mace rotates off this pivot point, right? Mm -hmm. And his body wants to rotate as you well. You want to go with it, right? Yeah, exactly. Versus if you start losing this one a little bit, then the mace rotates the same way, but at the same time... You're still under more control. You're still under more control. So, so the goal here is anti-rotation. Yes. So, so you, Great it's, term. You're, you're developing strength through by not letting it rotate. People will focus on rotational training and think that it means big, loopy, a lot right. of times uncontrolled movements. Mm -hmm. And what this, what we call it with our course, with our, around our, our mace, is a hashtag revel in rotation. So revel like party, like, hey, celebrate that shit, right? right. And so it's a party. So it's, it's a party, it's a party, it's a party. Uh. Yeah. So now what we want to do is focus your hands so you have your hands just at the same distance down your midline. So what's gonna happen is, as you move the mace, it's gonna want to find that center of mass of the mace near your center of mass. So your hands, even if it doesn't drop, your hands will wanna displace in this way, right? Mm -hmm. So your goal is to push and keep the, the equidistant down your midline, right around there. So think about your thumbs finding the outside edges, seams of your pants, and let's just do a basic deadlift pattern, okay? And just take note, the mace wants to move around a little bit, and you have to push and pull in appropriate ways to keep it stable. Wow, that feels weird. Right, it does, right? Mm -hmm. Now, just go ahead, and from there, you're gonna pull elbows back in a, a standing row. To, boom, okay, good. Now you should feel, okay, there's a lot going on. Now drive the elbows under. So now you, you've done kind of like a tight and high tension clean. Mm -hmm. Now when we do this, I actually want your wrist to stay neutral. So in a barbell clean, uh, you don't have to control rotation. You don't have to control because you're evenly weighted. You can release those wrists. But because that thing wants to fall, this one wants to swing up and smack you, we're going to keep our wrists nice and strong. So take note of when the mace was hanging down below, one was pulling and one was pushing, yeah. right? Yep. Now the opposite hand is pulling and the opposite hand is pushing, right? Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is to control that, he's driving up with his left hand, or right hand, and the left hand, since this is the pivot point, this handle wants to go up and over. He has to pull down actively to avoid that, to control that rotation. So let's go ahead and go from that position to a, to a squat. 
So good. Squat. Right. And come out nice and strong, keeping that. And take note, as we move, we want to slow down the movement just to be aware. If we move slowly, we're aware of when there's a lack of control. Right. If we move fast, we just know that we get from one point to the We get through the, the movement without, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Keeping so, tension, maintaining tension. Exactly. Or even being exactly aware how much that play is there. So let's go for an overhead press and see how that feels. All right. <laughs> You're killing me from the last video. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here, here we go. go. Keep it nice and tight. So slow that down again so you're a little more aware. Pull okay. it down out of the sky. Good. So keep the forearms nice and vertical. It's nice, neutral, tall spine. And just take note how much activation is happening through the scapula. And go ahead and pull it down. And let's just go from that side, just with the press. Let's go ahead and switch grips to the opposite side. And just take note of the difference from side to side. I think <laughs> a lot of people, they underestimate the fact that one side of your body functions way different than the other side of your body. And when we're bilaterally loaded, we hide from that, that asymmetry. Absolutely. We're going to feed the asymmetry now. So you can tell me if there's a big difference okay. as you go through this one. Okay. So now I'm doing the deadlift. Yeah, sure. Let's start. go ahead and go through all three, all three yeah, drills. Right. So what happens is your scapula are stabilizing in a push pull configuration here because you, your straight arms mean your scapula have to do the work, right? Right. So now as we go through that, now go ahead and go into that high row into the clean. All oh, right, Ooh, high yeah. row. So pull the elbows back. So now that you can stand and drive the elbows up, there's a little more controlled, a little tighter rotation, right? You're not swinging the mace around you. Right. Okay. Now squat. Nice. And let's go for that press. <sighs> Beautiful. Pulling it down. Now, did you feel that there was a big difference from side to side there as you went through those drills, or you felt pretty, pretty, pretty stable, pretty controlled? I mean, there was a difference for sure. Yeah, there was a little, little difference there going from right to left. I think that was just the natural kind of adjustment my body had to make too, just to kind of distribute that uh, strength and that support. Yeah, and I think that's another thing that's really important to to highlight is um, through this, we're actually creating a more sensitive and responsive nervous system mm. because it's, it's not about necessarily overreacting because that's what the nervous system can tend to do. If you notice as you made some adjustments, some of those Speed adjustments, were, yeah, they, they start, they start to make over adjustments. Yes. And then as you, if you were to do two or three reps, all of a sudden it would look like the mace was more and more stable because the nervous system would figure out exactly how to stabilize against that rotary load. And in the real world, What's, what's really interesting to me is we, we work in this sterile environment where everything's very predictable, very bilaterally loaded, mm -hmm. and we're able to, to progressively challenge ourselves with maximal amounts of incremental progressive load. Right. But then in the real world, you have to have like this, the weight room strength, and then you have to bridge that with sports-specific skills. But we don't have a, a type of rotary strength training system mm -hmm. widely accessible. Well, we try to make it accessible at Onnit, but where it starts to introduce these things that are more like what we experience in the real world. No one's going to square up on you and let you just <laughs> exert maximum force. No, it's never going to happen in a way that's controlled like that or like, yeah, it's predictable. So, uh, I mean, this is where unilateral training too, where we always highlight because, um, you know, that's a lot more real world applicable. And so I really like these movements to kind of help highlight uh, any deficiencies or anything going on with your body that, you know, you, you really need to focus on bringing that into a more of a solid type of a, a, you know, fully loaded barbell. Yeah, man. And, and we have so many different ways to introduce that offset load and challenge your structure in ways that a lot of other tools won't. And even with really light weights, so like that's mm. a 15, mm -hmm. a lot of times we'll be using a 10 pound weight. And everybody sees on Instagram, they're, they're inspired by the, the, the large, big swinging motions or the flow Right. sequences and those are all great but it starts starts here just becoming aware of owning that midline mm. and understanding what it takes to stabilize this thing in space as you start swinging it around you don't want it to just be purely momentum you want to have be able to tie that back to your center right in my experience like being able to control uh these forces in this load at a better way like a th this is one of those types of training exercises that really help to kind of highlight that importance and then you know it'll carry over into all types of different trainings yeah definitely and so on that on that you know i think it's really important to uh, just take a moment to honor uh you know with the you know we do a lot of the other tools kettlebells clubs and a lot of those tools we've had systems that we've 
drawn inspiration from. Mm -hmm. So I just want to take a, a quick minute to say, hey, you know, I remember when we started training maces because on it already had them and mm -hmm. we weren't like experts in it. I assigned this task to our uh, Kurt uh, master coach, Isik, Eric Isik Milan, who used to be a hip hop artist here oh, in the right. Bay Area. The underground Viking hill. Ninja, right? The Viking Ninja, yeah. 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 And so uh, I, I told him like, hey, you know the framework, you understand our principles. Hey, you apply those principles to this tool and create a more comprehensive system of training utilizing this thing. So a lot of the things that we're talking about and the way that we look at using the tool are, uh, yeah, maybe I got to influence it, but I really have to honor his his creative mindset. That same artistry he he brought to music, he brought to the mace. And oh, that's great. It's really cool. Yeah. It's it's cool to see when people really pick up a concept like that and then run with it and are creative like that. So that's that's awesome. Definitely, man.